everyone. I'm Colleen Flanagan. I am the host of Odd Talk, hashtag, hashtag Odd Talk, the Auditorium Theater video chat and podcast. Thanks all of you for joining us this week. Our very special guest this week is longtime radio host and DJ from WXRT and your best friend and, and my best friend in the whole world, Lynn Bremer. Thanks for joining us, Lynn. Thank you, Colleen. It's wonderful to see you through it's, the prism of Zoom. To, it's good to see faces, right? Good to see anybody. <laughs> so uh, where are you calling in from today? Where are you in Chicago? Well, I am uh, in the Bramer Bunker, okay. the Shakedown Shack, the um, COVID Cottage. Alliteration the, um, is good. The, the Pillow Fort of Solitude, where <laughs> okay. I've been uh, doing my radio show. I've been doing my radio show from home. All the XRT DJs are at home. Richard Milne in the morning starting off and uh, everybody from various places in their home. And it, it's been quite an adventure and uh, a lot of work. More work than I thought. I thought it'd be easier at home. I, I don't think it is. <laughs> Why is it more work? Is it because you're doing all of it, everything? Well, there's when I'm in the studio, I have access to all the stuff I don't have at home in terms right. of putting the show together. So there's a lot more mapping out of what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go and when I'm going to do it. So it's uh, sort, of, sort of like an NFL playbook, you know, uh, down and out, uh, hook and go. Um, but uh, it's worked out pretty well. I, I, I think the sound is good and uh, is we've good. been playing some some pretty cool songs for people during their quarantine. So if anyone who knows you, they see you all over town all the time. You're never at home, hardly, it seems. So I'm just curious, how are you spending your time besides DJing at home? Well, you know, there is this aching void in our lives. We can't go to the auditorium theater to see live music or ballet. Um, and, and that's, you know, that, that's something that really is hard for XRT listeners. So I've actually been leaning on some of the live stuff we've shared with XRT listeners. We do webcasts at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday of uh, live from Studio X and uh, shows from our Blue Cross Blue Shield performance stage. And also Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. We dig into the archives for something Unbelievable. Bob Marley from The Quiet Night, 1975. Uh, David Byrne from 1997. Um, the Clash from 1979 at the Aragon Ballroom. You know, when you've been around for 72 years, you collect some live recordings that uh, are, are peerless. So that's been fun. Also, there are so many singer-songwriters I love that have been doing online performances. I think all of them. So I've yeah. seen uh, the great Richard Thompson. Uh, play from his home, play guitar and sing songs. Uh, Chicago's own Michael McDermott, I've seen. Uh, Singer-songwriter Joe Pug. Uh, who else have I seen? Uh, um, a whole host of artists that are doing uh, various degrees of home performance. I heard uh, on your show today that you have um, you have a list of music shelter and, and, and place lists. Something along yes, uh, somebody asked me to come up with a list of comforting, comforting songs. Yes. Um, some of them are new, like a band called The Lone Bellow. They have a song called Count On Me. That's what uh, I heard today, I think. Uh, yes, yeah. I did play that. I played it just for you today, Colleen. Thank you, I appreciate uh, it. But then there are all these old favorites that uh, we pull out, you know, songs that in one way or another comfort us. Some of them are kind of jokey, you know, like Georgia Satellites, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> the police don't stand so close to me. Yes. Um, so there's a wide range of, but I've pointed out that really, really the best thing to do when you're looking for music to listen to is some of that great new music that I'm talking about, but also some of the songs you grew up listening to, yeah. you know, uh, the nostalgia isn't the worst thing in the world right now. Not at all. I, I put on a, just randomly, or I, I think it was just shuffle, uh, and it was Talking Heads, This Must Be the Place. And I thought, how fitting is this song <laughs> right now? And it, and it was comforting, and it was lovely. 
let me tell you something about that song. That was the last song I played in 1990 when I left XRT to go to Minneapolis. And it was the first song I played when I started the morning show in 1991. And since okay. you brought up Talking Heads, yes. what a coincidence. Let's see if we can. What do we got? Wow. Wow. That's me in when the was bottom. That? When was that? It was 1977. That was one of the first tours, or maybe the first tour Talking Heads did outside of New York. And uh, I'm the guy in the bottom there. I see that. <laughs> I'm the guy that looks like he's in the Allman Brothers band. And back oh, when that picture was taken, people would look at it and go, hey, who are the weirdos with the short hair? I go, it's a new band, Talking Heads, Talking Heads 77. You got to check it out. And, you know, how many years later, I don't want to do the math. People look at the picture and go, hey, who's the hippie burnout with talking heads? And they were in the lower. <laughs> so interestingly, they were an opening act for a Long Island group called the Good Rats. They played Page Hall at the State University of New York in Albany, which is where I was a part-time DJ at the time and a record store clerk. They opened up, they played to like 350 people. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, so many people. I've not seen the Talking Heads. I've seen David Byrne, but so many people have not seen the Talking Heads. Live. I bet you you saw David Byrne at a little place called the Auditorium Theater. Yeah, let's talk about the Auditorium Theater. Did you go to that concert? Yes. I sure did. It no, did. Uh, was not only one of the best concerts of the year, it was certainly one of the best concerts of my life. I had interviewed David Byrne a month or two before he did that tour. And I was not prepared. You know, he told me there were all these musicians and he told me a lot about it, but I was not prepared for the visual feast and the uh, audio majesty of what was presented on stage. And okay. probably many people know that this is the show that went to Broadway and ran, has been running, uh, I don't know if it's still running, but it ran for a long time, smash hit. It is, it was supposed to come back this fall it stopped and it, before all this happened, it stopped and was supposed to come back this fall. If it does, I that's it's on my list to go see it on Broadway because uh, you, you I only saw it once and you have to see it more than once. It's just, yes, and you know the the arrangements of the songs. I'll tell you what, hearing I Zimbra done with a, a drum line on the stage yes. of the Auditorium Theater was unforgettable. Oh, I, I've seen I've seen David and Talking Heads a bunch of times, of except time. for the except for the Stop Making Sense tour. That was the show for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say it's easily top five concerts of all time. Yeah, and yeah. certainly the auditorium. It was incredible there. Um, so speaking of the auditorium, do you remember the first time you went to the auditorium theater? Do you remember what show it was? Or you know, I was I was thinking about that. Uh, and for all of you watching this right now, you should know that the Auditorium Theater has a list of all their shows on their website. Did you know that, Colleen? I, I do. I do. Because we just put it up maybe in the last few months. It's got, you know, Sarah Bernhardt performances from 1912. Oh. It has, um, you know, stuff from the late 19th century. Uh, coming all the way through the 60s, a lot of rock and roll, classic rock and roll performances in the 60s. I'm having trouble remembering the first time I walked in, okay. but I, I can tell you this, the first time I walked in there, because uh, architecture is a big part of my life. My dad was an architect. Oh, I Walking that. in that place was, I could sum it up in one gasp. It was <gasps> walking in and seeing that ring of lights and the way the interior looks and, and the multi-levels and hearing the acoustics in there. I'm a complete acoustic nerd. Lynn, do you have any good, I, I, I think I said backstage or front stage stories for us? Well, I did, I did go backstage once to interview Paul Simon, who's okay. you know one of my all time favorites. She grew up in my neighborhood not my neighborhood, but he grew up in Farsals, Queens, Simon and Garfunkel. And uh, so we had some, some common ground, both baseball fans. And I started out by asking him about his, his life in the Farsals Little League. And he said, 
you know, I just took my coach to a Yankees game and I'm doing the math, you know, Paul Simon's at this point in the seventies, I'm going, how old is this coach? He said, oh, my coach was 86. He's, he's in great shape. Took him to a Yankee game. And then I said, was he your coach in Little League? He said, no, 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 he was my high school coach. I said, you played in high school? Because I know we went to Forest Hills High School, which to Chicagoans would be like Lane Tech, huge 5,000 kids school. He said, you played varsity high school baseball? He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, that, that's serious high school baseball. That's 5,000 kids. He goes, uh, yeah, I played right field. And I let off. I said, you let off? Did you steal any bases? He said, yeah. He said, I stole home once. It's the thing I was most famous for before I became famous. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I've done, I've done all these stage announcements. There have been catastrophes. There have been artists who have asked me to leave the premises for reasons I'll never know. Um, name them, name them, you won't. <laughs> you won't. Oh, yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> well, famously, there was some kind of mix-up. I don't know. Um, but at Ravinia, I was supposed to introduce this great chanteuse. She was very, very famous um, coming off her first album. And Ravinia was packed. And when I introduce her, make stage announcements at Ravinia, yeah. it's not, are you ready to rock and roll? Right. <laughs> much more. Thank you for coming. Hope you're enjoying your wine. Um, I was instructed to tell people to try to make room for each other because it was kind of oversold. And I said, remember, we're only here for one voice. And um, that's the voice of this singer who's coming up. And I started walking off the stage and she was on the side of the stage. And she's like whisper yelling at me. She's going, what are you doing? You're ruining it. You're getting them too excited. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not getting anybody excited with those remarks. And a road manager turns and says to the security people who have known me for 25, 30 years, I want him ejected now. And I am led from the backstage area unceremoniously because Nora Jones was having a meltdown. That makes some sense. Uh, but you know, they're they're not all they're not all horror stories. There are a few. I I could regale you for another hour with horror stories. But coming up tonight on XRT, we have a webcast of uh, live from Studio X that was done at Shuba's with the singer L King, famous okay. for X's and O's and shame. Yeah. And I went to the green room to talk to her before because it's kind of interview and a couple songs and they said you know her voice is hanging on by a thread she really needs to take it easy so we can have her do a couple songs but we don't know how much of the interview she can do and i said don't worry about it. i got to cover they said what do you mean you got to cover i said tell you what i'm going to do i'll be on stage introduce the band to play a song, and then that's where I'm supposed to interview El King. So I will ask a question in my microphone, and I will run over to her microphone, and I'll answer it as if I'm her. And then I'll go back to my microphone and ask another question, and then run back to her microphone and answer the question as El King. And at a certain point during this, El King leaned over and said, I think you make a better El King than L. King. <laughs> and you can see that tonight at 93XRT.com. There's my plug for sure. a webcast. I will make sure to listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Did the auditorium ever escort you out? I've never had a bad experience at the auditorium. I haven't emceed that many shows. I, I think maybe because the artists are too big. Um, you know, I, I remember Wilco's show in 2003 because that was a, a crucial point in their career because that was uh yankee foxtrot, foxtrot hotel, hotel yeah. uh and <laughs> you know the movie i am trying to break your heart includes me asking them backstage at yeah. trillo music shell when's your new album coming out and that was the crux of the whole movie was right. their record company 
Warner Brothers said, no, nah, we've reprise said, we don't hear any hits here. You got to go back and do it. And they said, you know what? <laughs> we doing it. So they were able to go back and, and release it some months later on what turned out to be a subsidiary of Warner Brothers, uh, none such records. So <laughs> the decision by Reprise not to put it out seems like a bad idea now because when it was released on none such, it went to number one. It's an and, incredible. And that was the year that Wilco played the uh, first of two consecutive years at the auditorium. And, you know, Wilco is so much a part of Chicago, so much a part of the sound of XRT that uh, that was a pretty amazing place to see that band play. You know, the legacy, the history, the ghosts you feel like you see in, in the upper reaches. Uh, and I'll tell you this, Jimi Hendrix played the Auditorium Theater August 10th, 1968. It was before... I think his third album came out, Electric Ladyland. So he was still doing stuff from his first two albums, uh, mostly. And, you know, if somebody were to ask me, what show do you wish you were at anywhere in the world at any time? Jimi Hendrix at the auditorium. You have to understand that in high school, I actually worshipped at the altar of the Church of Jimi Hendrix. That's a good altar to worship at. Yes, it is. Any other concerts you remember? Any shows? You also go, I think a lot of people know this, you go to a lot of dance and theater, and we, we did a jazz show in January that you went to for the first time. The, uh, are you talking about the Messiah? Yeah, Too Hot to Handle, the jazz gospel. Too Hot Messiah. to Handle. Now, here I am, one of the biggest fans of uh, Handel's Messiah. I think I have four different recordings of it okay. by various people. I either see the... Apollo Chorus do it every year, every other year, or I go, there's a, a local parish performance uh, in my neighborhood, and I go see, see that. Uh, when, you're talking about comfort playlists. When I really want comfort, I listen to the fourth movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and I listen to the Messiah all the way through. So I was, you know, a little reluctant at first. I know Too Hot to Handle has been going on at the Auditorium Theater for years and years. I'm like, I I don't know if I want to see a gospel Messiah. Yeah. And I went and it infused it with so much life and, and the, the soulful renderings of for unto us, a child is born. It was really something special. I'm so glad I got talked into going. And it really is, uh, you know, something that people go to every year and it's just, uh, it's such a Chicago show. Uh, like not only the audience reflects it, but who's on stage. It's just, it's just a reflection of Chicago when you go. You know what? I really got the feeling looking around that it was a lot of movers and shakers in Chicago. It was one of those events. Everybody was there. Yeah, it was great. What other things have you enjoyed at the auditorium? Oh, I've been to a few shows at the auditorium theater. I know. I've seen Emmy Lou Harris at the yeah. auditorium theater. Yeah. I've seen uh, Widespread Panic. They did three XRT shows. Uh, and I was at one of the shows, I was in the third row. And XRT has a long history with Widespread Panic. Their, their first album um, came out on Landslide Records in, I want to say, 86 or 87. And I think XRT was the first station in the world to play the band, that which I sense. don't I, I, I never miss an opportunity to remind them of that when I see them. <laughs> that was in the third row, a spectacular show. And one thing, though, kind of a warning for those of you who attend widespread panic concerts, many of their fans are bad dancers. And, you know, <laughs> being a bad dancer myself, I, I hate to say that, but they're, they bump into people when they dance because they're but so wrapped up purpose. in the music. Not on purpose. Not on purpose, okay. I've seen Smashing Pumpkins at the Auditorium Theater. Uh, I've seen the Joffrey Ballet. Yeah. I've seen uh, Alvin Ailey dance. You know, I grew up in New York City. I went to high school in Manhattan. And Alvin Ailey was a part of my life back in the 1970s. And when I found out uh, when I came to Chicago that I could see them at the Auditorium Theater, that is something I've done several times uh, where they're they're doing new work. They're doing revelations. You know, I'm just interested. Uh, you said your dad was an architect. Yes. 
And so, you know, have you, have you experienced the acoustics of the auditorium? I know you had dinner on stage at our theater, but you know, That's you can right. talk on stage and you can hear from the sixth floor, perfect, like a whisper. I, I have not had that experience. But, you're gonna have to uh, change that. You're gonna have to change that. I know XRT did a tour a few years ago for listeners of the Auditorium Theater, and they, they had the chance to be all the way at the top and hear somebody whisper on stage. You know, here we live in a culture where they tear down billion dollar stadiums every 20 or 30 years. <laughs> and here you have um, an acoustic marvel that's been in Chicago since the 19th century. I just wish there were a little more respect for old buildings. Okay, other shows just Sorry. clicked into my mind. Oh, good, go. uh, Neil Young, solo acoustic. He played guitars, he played a pump organ um, at, at the auditorium. Okay. And I remember it was very unusual because it was an older crowd, it was a Neil Young crowd, but I wanted to I wanted to scold them because there were a lot of people yelling requests between every song. It was unbelievable. Yes. This was just a few years ago, right? Yeah, just a, a yeah. couple years ago. I think it was no, they were on they were an unruly bunch. It was like <laughs> we had some issues, you know, and usually it's a younger crowd and they, you know, drinking and doing other things. It was like that, except everybody was over the age of 70. <laughs> <laughs> so Not it, not, not every, everybody not everyone not everyone but a lot a lot were so we just it was but you know they yes they were an unruly well, bunch the, <laughs> the song selection was tremendous you know he did he did so many of my favorites and he handled the crowd so well you yeah. know it's you know here's a guy that's been performing for half a century he's he's seen and heard it all before and he always had kind of a wry smile on his face people yelling requests uh, I mean, at a certain point, going to concerts, you have to realize that they have what's called a set list. And yeah, sure, they'll deviate from it once or twice, but they're not taking requests. The whole <laughs> idea is not for you to yell a song and for them to go, you know, I haven't played that in 45 years. Let's see if I can do it now in front of 3,500 people. Oh, that's so That's fun. not going to happen. It was a wonderful show. It was just remarkable, as you say, that, that, that the crowd unruly. got a little unruly. Um, I remember somebody yelled out, um, you know, play Cinnamon Girl. He said, okay, I'll play that in a few weeks. <laughs> Not here. Um, Jason Isbell. Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed you're a huge with Jason fan. Isbell. You're obsessed. Yes. Um, and, you know, you talk about music that I've gone back and listened to. Um, Last couple of albums, uh, I feel that he's maybe the best contemporary singer-songwriter I've seen. And he played the Auditorium Theater. It was an amazing show. You know, speaking of singer-songwriters, and, you know, you, you hear all the time when there's trauma and, and there's, there's tragic events. And, you know, I think this falls into that for sure, is that creativity comes from that and art comes from that. And... I'm just curious what, what you think is, is next uh, after this is over and, and we sort of move on with art and music. Well, I, I can tell you this. Um, when this is all over, concert halls will be jammed. There'll be lines around the block for restaurants. This city who changes uh, its character whenever spring rolls around, it gets to be 70 degrees, Imagine coupling that experience with the idea that people have been stuck at home essentially for two months. When there is that final release, this city is going to lose its mind. I can't and, wait. And those businesses that reopen, I hope, are ready for, for the on onslaught because we're, the first thing we're going to do is go out to restaurants, go out to concerts, go out to parks, uh, go to ball games. There's a lot we want to do that we haven't done in a long time, and we're missing it. And I think once this is over, uh, there will be a great celebration and release. I agree. And we can't wait. We're ready. We're ready at the auditorium. We're 130 years old. 
so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> We've survived. We survived the, the 1918 flu. We looked at the, uh, the, the shows that year and it looks really? like, we were, yeah, we look like, so it's not a perfect list. We don't have every single show, but it looks like we kind of closed for a little bit in 1918 because there wasn't a ton of shows that year. So we're, we'll be back. Um, but 130 years, we've been asking a ton of our patrons, people that we're talking to, or artists who played our stage, their favorite memory or memories of the auditorium theater. And I know you talked about a lot of concerts, but do you have a, a favorite or two? Well, for a number of reasons, uh, I think if I chose a favorite, it would be uh, the Mavis Staples 75th birthday gala. Terry Hemmert came out and made the opening remarks on stage, and she was great. Uh, she knows Mavis Staples pretty well. Tom Marker, longtime host of Blues Breakers on XRT, he was the backstage voice introducing artists. And it was a star studded group of, you know, some of my favorite musicians, everybody from uh, Bonnie Raitt to Chicago's own Otis Clay, uh, appearances by Widespread Panic, um, a couple members of, of Arcade Fire, Quinn Butler and Regine Chasson uh, came out and uh, performed those songs, uh, Amy Lou Harris, th those songs that uh, Mavis Staples and the Staples singers have made famous to so much of the musical fabric of the city of Chicago. And uh, Mavis Staples herself is this, this power pack that commands a room from a very distant perch. And hearing her sing some of her stuff and hearing other people sing songs that uh, the Staples singers either did or, or inspired by, uh, that's, that's the show that really sticks out in my mind for all those reasons. Uh, and seeing Mavis Staples uh, finish it up with the weight. Yeah. Uh, that was one of those rare moments where you know you're going to remember it the rest of your life. We were honored. We were honored to host her concert. It was incredible. Yeah. What a, what, a great, what a great night for the Auditorium Theater to have uh, Mavis Staples come in and... and such a great celebration 75th birthday and she's still going strong she is we hope to have her back we can't wait Colleen, always great to talk to you kind always of good to see you. you on zoom yes and, uh, be careful out there thanks everyone for listening this week and thanks to lynn for joining us Next Wednesday, we have another edition of Hashtag Odd Talk with the City of Chicago's Commissioner of Cultural Affairs, Mark Kelly, he'll be joining us. And then this coming Sunday, we will have Susan Werner, uh, amazing, incredible singer-songwriter, doing our At Home at the Auditorium Theater, which is every Sunday at 6 p.m. And she'll be performing for us live on Sunday. We hope you'll join us for both of those. Thank you so much and stay safe.